Hello, I'm Matt Nahn, co-project manager for the restoration of former public service coordinated transport PCC car number 26, which was previously used in Newark, New Jersey, and is now being restored by the Baltimore Streetcar Museum in Baltimore, Maryland. This presentation will focus on a specific feature of the restoration, namely repairs to the passenger seats. So grab a seat yourself as we walk through the restoration of this part of the car over the next several minutes. This represents car number 26 as it looked in the late 1960s, generally represents how the restored number 26 will look. But this presentation will focus not on the exterior, but the interior. So let's take a look inside. This photograph, courtesy of our friends in the Minnesota Streetcar Museum, shows how the interior of the car looked when it was originally purchased for Twin City Lines in Minnesota. You can see here with the seats how they represent the original PCC car specifications for seats, namely that all exposed areas were chrome plated, whereas hidden areas such as the seat, the lower legs of the seat and the lower frame were tubular steel which was painted. This next photo is from St. Louis Car Company, and it shows again how the original interior looked uh, as delivered to Twin City Lines. This is a view looking forward. This is a view looking back. Again, it clearly shows how exposed areas were chromium plated, whereas hidden areas or areas not as visible, one would say, uh, were simply painted. Also in this view, you can see the cream ceiling and the green interior walls. Now, due to, a black, due to it being a black and white photo, the color separation between the two shades of green is not very clear in this scene. When the cars went to Newark, New Jersey, the entire area of green was all painted one color, a darker green, which is how the restored appearance of car 26 will look. But the seats themselves were not changed in Newark for many years. They still carried the same green upholstery and same pattern. In later years in Newark, the seats were changed to use a fabric that was common to New Jersey Transit buses. This shows how the appearance looked, um, and it's, if you want to say, when it was in good condition. Uh, this is actually restored car number six at the Rock Hill Trolley Museum, uh, where the volunteers there a decade ago restored the interior appearance to the car to how it looked in its last service days in Newark. You can see clearly how the green areas are gone. There's a blue and largely a white, uh, which covered the interior. The cream is gone. And of course, as mentioned, the seats themselves, the upholstery has changed, although the frames remain largely the same. This is a view of a newer car. It's believed to be car 26, actually, uh, with passengers on it. Again, this clearly shows the seats. Uh, ironically enough, several of the individuals in this photo now play significant roles in the restoration of car 26, uh, whether it be hands-on or through um, support from a distance. Um, little did they know at that time this car would be the subject of a future restoration and they would be involved in it. But again, getting back on topic, it shows the, how the seats looked during the car's last years of service in Newark. This is a sister car to 26 and after a decade of storage, you can see how the interiors had started to deteriorate. 26 was no different. Um, specific to the seats, if you look down at the floor line, you can see the rust which is formed around the feet or the base of the seats. Um, this was found to be serious in 26. Why did the seats rust from the inside out? Largely due to passengers tracking salt and slush from their feet into the car, uh, where the newer cars did not run in salt covered streets. The platforms themselves for passenger safety were treated with rock salt that would get tracked into the cars as passengers you know, walked around, put their feet uh, on the feet rests at the bottom of the seats or walked by the, uh, the lower feet of the seats themselves. It caused significant deterioration um, and 26s in particular had gotten pretty bad in this regard. So from this, we go to what a sample seat looked like for car 26. Decision was made early on in the project to expand the scope beyond just exterior repairs and repainting, but to also include the interior 
and backdate it to the same appearance as the exterior, mid-1960s. Um, this was the first suit we had done as a sample. You can see the upholstery pattern, both in terms of color and texture. It matched what Newark used and what Twin City Lines used uh, as delivered. You can see the frame, uh, although it still would need to be, the painted areas would need to be cleaned and painted, um, has been also repaired as a sample. And we're going to focus a little more on that. But comparing the last slide from the New, New Jersey Transit uh, seat upholstery and configuration to this, this provides a good idea via our first sample. This provides a comparison of the upholstery. You can see, as mentioned, the New Jersey Transit bus fabric that was used um, over time, and particularly you can see in the middle seat, the upholstery itself had started to deteriorate rather badly. It started to rip. Um, in car 26, it was applied, or I should say installed in 1985. Uh, the car ran until 2011, sat for another decade before it went to Baltimore, more than a decade before it went to Baltimore. The seats just simply started to fall apart. On the right, you can see sample cushions and backs, which have been reupholstered in the new material. It is quite a striking contrast. Not shown here, but an equal part of the project was the fact that the stuffing had to be replaced, the padding, I should say, in the seats, as well as the wooden underlayment that the uh, upholstery mounts to. A number of these were deteriorated, had to be replaced in their entirety. This view here shows a seat frame as it's being prepared for, for further repairs. If you look at the lower uh, side of the photo, you'll see the legs of the seat have been cut off, cut flush, there are no feet. That was for a reason. Our restoration contractor, uh, Real Mechanical Services Inc. in Columbia, PA, uh, developed jointly with Streetcar Museum volunteers a repair procedure to correct the issues with the seats. Again, the feet were so deteriorated that removing the seats and attempting to put them back in the restored car simply was not feasible. Uh, the legs would have broken off uh, just at a position slightly raised from the floor line, uh, would not have been durable and not in keeping with the type of restoration we were going for. So one of the features of this was a specialty jig made to mount the new feet and ensure they're at the proper height um, it has two parts. Now, what's on the workbench here um, in the foreground is part of the rub rail. That's not part of the seat work. Unfortunately, I did not get a still photo with the seat in the, in the jig. But if you look at the right, that angled plate with bolts, that actually holds the seat. It represents the wall of the car, holds the seat uh, on the wall side at the proper angle. And this could be reversed for seats on the other side. And then, as indicated by the circle, is that frame device that would be clamped to the other side of the seat allowing the collars and the feet to be placed under it at the exact height it accounts for the again the angle the seat is mounted at and then these in turn would be welded on at the end of the video and i'm going to put it in the uh, the comments as well that go uh, that you know are visible there will be a hyperlink to a video done by Operator Logan, another member of the restoration team, uh, showing this process live at RMS. Um, it's a short video, about three minutes, but the tech actually walks you through mounting it in the frame, mounting it on the jig, and actually uh, how, the, how the collars are placed, the collars and the feet are placed at the right level. So I encourage you, uh, if you've watched this video and seen it in you know, more of an instructional form, to then go to Operator Logan's page and see the tech performing this work live or record it. So using the jig that was built for the process, the feet were slid on and welded in place. And you can see here both the collar piece as well as the bottom plate, uh, which make up the foot of the seat. Each of these were fabricated in RMS's shops um, as part of the restoration. The seat, the painted areas will then be stripped prepared and then finally paint it. And you can see here, this is again, one of the techs at RMS, um, cleaning that area in prep for priming and painting. Now, what good would restored seats be without a restored interior? I mentioned earlier, that's part of the project. This shows the interior as it's about 90% completed. Uh, of course, prior to the seats being installed, you can see in this stage, the rubber flooring is going in. That's new flooring. Um, the stainless steel uh, heater guards 
or I should say vent guards uh, will be installed on the lower car sides and then each seat frame will be bolted on. So hopefully you will be riding them soon, riding these very seats on car 26 at the Baltimore Streetcar Museum. Uh, we need your support to do that. We hope you found this video to be, you know, educational, but also consider it a plea for your assistance to help us finish this project. Our goal is that you will be riding car 26 come late summer of this year, 2021. And um, it'll be a great opportunity to ride a restored car from Newark, New Jersey at the museum. Um, car 26 will represent a different appearance than any other restored car right now. Uh, car 6 of the Rock Hill Trolley Museum is restored to more or less how the car looked in its final days in 2001 when it was the ceremonial car, which in turn represents 1954. Car 1070 in San Francisco, operated by San Francisco MTA on the F line, uh, represents Newark in 1954. Car 26, again, will be a little bit different with its white fleet numerals. It'll represent the mid 1960s. As I mentioned, we're looking for your help. Please help us finish this job. Car 26's work at RMS is nearly done. Uh, we need to raise additional funds to fully fund the transportation back to the museum uh, where final work will be completed. The Streetcar Museum itself has about five to six months of finished work that's not included in the contract to do before this car can enter regular service. So for more information, please go to our website. You can see the link there where you can make an online donation. Um, I also, as mentioned earlier, really encourage you to take a look at Operator Logan's uh, collection of videos. He's done an outstanding job documenting the restoration process. And again, this is more of an educational format. What Logan has done is gone and shown the work in progress. And in particular, as the link there shows, the seat repairs, you can watch um, RMS's fab guys do this live. So appreciate your interest. Appreciate uh, your participation in this video. And uh, we hope to see you riding the restored car 26 in the near future. Again, I'm Matt Nahn, and on behalf of the project team in the Baltimore Streetcar Museum, thank you very much.